How's it going? I just got through seeing Deadpool 2 and this is the spoiler version. The spoiler. If you haven't seen the movie, I recommend you checking out the non-spoiler. Otherwise, I'm gonna go over some of my opinions of it and try to break down some of the Easter eggs. So let's have at it. The non-spoiler version, by the way, is in the link down below, so you can just click on that. I was so ready for Deadpool. I got my Slurpee cup from 7-Eleven, and I even got my popcorn bucket from the theater. Yeah, I'm a slave to merchandise. Yeah, this is just more of a informative uh, view of Deadpool. I abandoned comedy a long time ago. This is now an educational video. It opens up with him, of course, blowing himself up, and it shows that Vanessa has died. Heartbreaking, considering the fact that I had just got through watching the season finale of Gotham, where her character, the actress's character, dies. So th that's twice in one day I got to watch her die. I suppose that was a uh, spoiler of the Gotham season finale. Oops. Yeah, then the movie starts off with this whole James Bond intro to Celine Dion's music. You know, leave it to Deadpool to be funny, but also have a good Celine Dion song playing with a great opening montage. No, I actually really enjoyed the movie. The very fact that Wade and Vanessa were talking about having children and they were naming children, she was totally uh, having the red flag to kill her own self off. It's the classic, I have one day to retirement statement right before the character dies. She doesn't die from any main villain or anything like that. Just some random assassin and he's killed off right away. That's kind of semi-refreshing, believe it or not. The same way that when I watched Batman Begins, I was glad that it was Joe Chill that killed Bruce's parents rather than like the Joker. Even though, yes, I liked that little touch from Tim Burton, you gotta be realistic of why they fight crime. Sometimes bad guys get lucky, and it can be just a random punk. Batman has said it himself. He can either see himself dying trying to save the world, or one day some thug is lucky enough to get a shot. Uh, the film goes on, and it has him visiting Vanessa after he tried killing himself. He sees Vanessa in the afterlife, but he can't get to her. I was a little disappointed. I thought he was actually gonna meet Mistress Death. I know, I thought in Infinity War, I called her the right name, but I called her Lady Death, but it's Mistress Death. She's kind of connected throughout Marvel, and Mistress Death is in love with Deadpool. I thought we were gonna see her, and she was gonna try to stop him from seeing Vanessa. I guess we don't know who owns Mistress Death. Is it the MCU or is it Fox? Hopefully it'll be the MCU where they'll own everything. Of course he learns that he has to serve other people and this is where he decides to try to join the X-Men. Love that part. I loved when he visit the mansion. You get to see more of it. You even see a brief cameo of the X-Men just trying to avoid him. And I'm talking like the James McAvoy era X-Men. Still unclear of when Deadpool takes place, but it wasn't really like the actors were there. You could tell it was like a superimposed screen in the background. Hey, they acknowledge that they're in the same universe, so fine. While trying to go on the first mission as the trainee, Deadpool goes along with Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Sonic Teenage Warhead. Yeah, I think that's her name. Negasonic actually has a girlfriend named Yukio. Now, I don't know if you recall this, but Yukio was the girl that uh, hung out with Wolverine in The Wolverine. Different actress, but I'm hoping it's the same character. The Fox X-Men films, they love recasting people and naming them the same character and that character not acknowledging anything from the past films. So everything's a gray area with the Fox X-Men films. Oh, another funny part is as Wade was trying to kill himself, he's playing a musical box that has Logan dying on a branch. That was actually a funny 
cute nod. Uh, anyways, back to the film. Uh, Wade's riding around in Xavier's wheelchair. And then on the first mission, Wade, of course, is a trainee and he joins, as I said, Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. And they're trying to take, ba- take down this boy named Russell, this kind of a chubby boy, and he calls himself Fire Fist. And it turns out that that boy would eventually grow up to kill Cable's family. In the film, Cable goes back in time to try to kill Russell so that doesn't happen. Couple things here. In the comics, Cable has a son named Tyler. And there is an alternate universe where Hope is involved. And my knowledge is, of course, based from my friend. But I also picked up knowledge from what I've read in the comics and some of the cartoons. So maybe a little wrong here. But what I've learned mostly from my friend is Hope is Scott and Madeline Pryor's daughter. This is one of those like alternate universe type of scenarios, but Cable does in the comics adopt Hope and he brings her back to the future. The same way as he traveled to the future because he had a disease and it was only to be cured in the future. So that's why he is stuck there. The movie doesn't go into that much detail because it can only do so much with the universe of X-Men. There are too many branches. Branches off into different things, different universes, different interpretations. But yeah, uh, in the film, Josh Brolin Cable, he goes back in time to try to kill Russell so he can save his family from from someday being assassinated. The other thing about that, a little Easter egg I found, was Russell. He is actually from an orphanage that experiments on mutant kids. The orphanage is called the Essex House. Now, if you know your X-Men knowledge, Essex is the last name of Nathaniel, Nathaniel X. Too many X's and S's. Nathaniel Essex is Mr. Sinister. If you recall the end credits scene from X-Men Apocalypse, it shows the government officials, uh, men in suits, trying to collect information after Wolverine had escaped, and they collect some vials of blood, and it says Essex Industries. It's all connected. Of course, mission fails. Uh, Deadpool gets a guilty conscience of wanting to save the boy instead of letting the Essex house take them back in. So Deadpool and now Russell are in trouble. They get locked up in a prison. They have the callers on them to stop them from using their abilities. And that's when Cable arrives at the prison. And of course, because Deadpool uh, does the whole like leave me alone kid thing, because now he discovers as long as he has the neck brace, his powers no longer will be stopping him from curing his cancer. So he figures he'll just die that way. Of course, Russell makes friends with this mysterious monstrous prisoner. Cable comes in, a whole fight breaks out, and on his next attempt of dying, Deadpool actually gets the advice to try to help out Russell, and that's when he recruits a team for himself. And all the characters you see in the trailer, they're in it for just a moment, and I'm a little disappointed, but because it's Deadpool, I can be very forgiving because that is the style of Deadpool. You introduce a character and they don't last. For example, Shatterstar. I wanted more from Shatterstar, but from what we got in that brief moment, actor covered Shatterstar pretty well. The actor who played Zeitgeist, he actually is the guy that played Pennywise in the new It movie. And of course, Terry Crews is in the film as well. It's Terry Crews. Man can do no wrong by me. (laughs) And we even get a hero that is invisible. Um, I very bad with this one because I never heard of him before. Um, Vanish or Vanisher or something like that. You don't ever see him. In fact, you're not even sure he's really there until you know you later see him on the plane wearing the parachute. And of course you get Peter, the guy with no powers, and Domino. Domino, as I said in the non-spoiler, I knew I would like her, but I didn't think I would end up loving her. And she actually was great. Uh, The look was kind of interesting to me. Like, I'd never had a problem with the casting of it. I just thought the look was interesting. Like, they gave her the afro, and it reminded me of something like in an old exploitation film where they were trying to go with the uh, foxy brown look for this film. It actually works out. As 
they're all trying to land uh, in parachute down into the town to save Russell. They all die in very different ways, and they're all hilarious. Uh, the Vanisher, I'm going to remember the name right after I turn off this camera. When he gets electrocuted, that's Brad Pitt. You see his face for a second as he's being electrocuted on the electric wires, and yeah, it turns out to be Brad Pitt. Oh, and speaking of cameos, the two rednecks that Cable comes across and steals their vehicle from, that's actually Matt Damon. Yes, he's playing another cameo in another Marvel movie, and he's having a conversation with Alan Tudyk. Now they're just cameos signing up left and right. All kinds of cameos. No Stanley, though. He must have been busy. All the action was pretty well done. Uh, they, Like I said before, they mixed the serious tone with a comedic tones. All the other characters we've known from the first movie, like Big Al, Dopender, and Weasel, they're back reprising their roles, and nothing really has changed except for uh, Dopender wanting to be an assassin, and he never really comes through on it. Big Al is just there as a support of some sort. And Weasel, all right, so my thing with T.J. Miller is it's always been an off and on kind of thing. Like, T.J. Miller can either be funny or just really dry. Like, I just, it really just depends on the film. I really only put up with him in the Deadpool movies, and he was probably the only good thing of uh, Transformers Age of Extinction until his character died. And it's probably because his character died early on is why I put up with him and thought he was funny. Otherwise, it, too much of him would be really grating. The surprise monstrous villain that Russell makes f friends with? Juggernaut! I was so happy when I saw Juggernaut. It's CGI Juggernaut, and I am perfectly fine with it. After X-Men 3, nothing against Vinnie Jones, but Juggernaut, he was not. In fact, there's a brief moment where Juggernaut actually just walking with Russell and talking about his brother in a wheelchair. Great. They actually acknowledge Juggernaut is Xavier's stepbrother because X-Men 3, they skipped that. And the final climax where Russell and Juggernaut return to the orphanage to deal with the crazy mutant experimenting religious psychopaths, the final fight was actually pretty good. Russell was a type of teen boy that would either get on your nerves, but when he was pissed, I actually believed in his rage. So I guess it can only piss you off as much as like a typical 14 year old can piss you off. Ah, oh, what more can I say? Uh, Colossus fighting Juggernaut at the end was great. Another thing they had the opportunity to use in X-Men 3 and they decided to not do it. They've kind of made up with it in this film. And that's the thing about Deadpool. I feel like they take everything that they kind of screwed up with in the X-Men films and try their best to cram it into these films just to kind of make it up to us. There were some homoerotic moments with Deadpool and Colossus, and because Deadpool is, I guess, pansexual, I can see that being a thing. There have been versions of the X-Men comics where Colossus is gay as well, although as in March, he did marry Kitty Pride, so... Whatever. I don't know what these comics want to do anymore. They'll just probably say it's another Earth. You know, in the comics, Deadpool actually does at times get with Domino. And it's kind of played like a Batman-Catwoman relationship. They don't always get along, but they do have a spark between each other. And I am just glad this did not happen in the film. Only because he just lost Vanessa. So it would just be a bit too soon for him to have a new girlfriend. Or boyfriend like Colossus. Another little Easter egg is when Deadpool is covered in the soot, in the dust, giving him that uh, gray and black look of his costume because that's one of his outfits he ends up wearing when he's part of the X-Force. At the end when Cable and Deadpool stops Russell and changes his mind because it's kind of like that oh, tender moment and everyone watches him die and, and Judging by the teddy bear that Cable had on him, Hope's teddy bear, he sees the bear is back to 
being good. So Cable uses his last charge to not go back to his time, but fix time where he gives Deadpool back the coin or token that Vanessa gave him so it'll stop the bullet. Okay, I mean, that was cool, you know, I guess. But yeah, it's the whole like yanking him out of the arms of Vanessa so he has another chance thing. But everything works out. Yes, Cable is stuck in that time. The movie ends and you have the mid credit scene. This is where I'm a little on the fence about things. Okay, the mid credit scene, you can either take it as continuity or canon or ignore it altogether. I, myself, I'm kind of leaning towards ignoring it. Yes, it was funny when he went through time because Negasonic Teenage Warhead actually fixed the little time trans <laughs> transporter device, but it only meant for Deadpool to actually go back in time to stop Ryan Reynolds from picking up the Green Lantern uh, project or killing a younger... I don't know if he's like killing the younger self of Deadpool where he meets Wolverine in X-Men Origins or if he's just saving the crowd from watching it but he kills the X-Men Origins uh, self Deadpool and yes that was funny and uh, got a huge applause from the people in the audience because that film was a nightmare then the thing that just really threw everything off what kind of left a bad taste in my mouth was he used the time transporter to save Vanessa again I don't see how that would be canon and the reason for that is if he saved Vanessa it would take away everything from the film it would take away the purpose of him actually saving Russell it would also mean if he's able to bounce around from time to time and say he did kill the X-Men Origins Deadpool self if that happened to be him, he's killing himself. So there's a lot of time paradoxes that he's kind of screwing with. But the main reason why I don't really want to count it as canon is because the whole movie built up this whole emotion of Vanessa and it drives a character to do what he does. Just like in life, tragedy makes us either worse or makes us better, but we learn from it. So if he actually goes and saves Vanessa, he's learned nothing and nothing has changed. But then again, in the time paradox, how would he ever get his hands on a time machine anyway, so we'll just have to find out if, if there's a third movie and we see Vanessa. But I suppose if he does say Vanessa, that would be fine too, only because, again, I like Vanessa. I'm just unsure of how I go with this. He does use the time transporter to save Peter, the guy that has no powers, he's just an everyday guy. I really thought he was actually gonna be like a secret agent or something. But no, he gets saved. Not the other guys that were enlisted with Deadpool. I would have loved to have them be saved, but it is what it is. I'm not the one who wrote the movie, so... Now, they did mention this might be the last film, but if you go on IMDb, Deadpool 3 is listed. But then again, there's been many movies that said were coming and never do. But for sure, if there is another Deadpool movie, it wouldn't be a solo movie. It would be done as an X-Force movie, or he would jump into another film. So we'll just have to see where it goes from there. I, for one, loved the movie. I can't say it's better than the first or worse than the first, because the first one was just more of an introduction. There's really little to no plot to it other than just introducing everyone. This movie had a lot of plot and it actually had a full story. It actually felt like I was watching an X-Men movie. In this case, it's a real apples and orange situation. But yeah, I love the movie and I would recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. And yeah, that's my two cents. If I'm wrong about any information, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Have a good one.